prehistoric age. Much of our knowledge of ancient history is based on the evidences supplied by archaeology. According to the reports of archaeological analysts, it is estimated that millions of years have passed since the first human being lived on the earth. Prehistoric refers to the period when human beings did not know how to read or write. The period when human beings used stone implements alone is called the Stone Age. The Stone Age has been further subdivided into three parts, the Old Stone Age, the Middle Stone Age and the New Stone Age. Old Stone Age The prehistorical period between 2,50,000 BC to 10,000 BC is known as Old Stone Age. This age is also called as Paleolithic Era. Paleo means old and lithic means stone. Early humans were hunters. They ate the flesh of the animals that they killed. These early humans lived in caves. Their early tools were made out of a hard type of rock which were later fashioned into hammers, scrappers, choppers and axe heads. Later Stone Age The period from 10,000 BC to 8,000 BC is known as Later Stone Age. In this age, people learned to make fire. They used fire for cooking, for softening and making food more tasty. Their tools were now polished and improved. These were now sharper and more efficient. New Stone Age The period between 6000 BC to 1000 BC is known as New Stone Age or Neolithic Age. Their tools were better made. The discovery of the wheel was a great landmark. Wheeled carts made traveling easier and more comfortable. Some of the New Stone Age sites have been excavated in Brahmagiri, Singanakallu, Uttanur, Tekali Fort and Musky Palace in India. The Age of Metals A great change came over the life of people when the discovery of metals and with the knowledge of their use. The metallic age began in 5000 BC. Copper was the first metal discovered. By mixing copper with tin, early humans got an alloy called bronze. At this age, early humans used bow and arrows, swords and lances made of metals. 2. Indian History Periods Sources Indian history has been divided into ancient period, medieval period and modern period. There are several sources to know the history of ancient India. These sources are available in both written and unwritten forms. 1. Written Sources Written sources or literary sources of Indian and foreign authors are very important to know the Indian history. Religion Literary Sources Vedas Jainist and Buddhist religion books are very important. Vedas are four in number. 1. Rig Veda 2. Yajur Veda 3. Sama Veda 4. Atharvana Veda From Rig Veda, we know the political, social, economic and religious aspects of the people in those times. Non-religious sources Sanskrit books Artha Shastra written by Kautilya has the state administrative principles. Paninis, Astadhai, Patanjali's, Mahabhyasa are more important to history. Kalhana's Raja Tarangini is the first historical book in Sanskrit language. Amarasimha's Anarkosham is the first dictionary in Sanskrit language. Prakrit books Jains, 
and Buddhists wrote the religious books in Prakrit, the spoken language of people for easy understanding. The sacred books of Jains are called Angas, whereas Buddhist books are called Tripitakas. Halas, Gata Saptasati, Guradyas, Britakata Manjari are important books in Prakrit language. Dravidian books Dravidian language has the oldest literature. Shilpa Dikkaram and Mani Mekala, who belong to Sangama era, tells us the religious aspects and foreign trade of this period. Kannada Kai Taj Margam, written by Ruptunga, Pampakanis, Vikramarjuna Vizayam are very useful to know the history and culture of the Deccan. Foreign Books India's physical wealth and spiritual thoughts attracted several foreign travelers and traders. They wrote in their books of things what they have seen and heard in India. From the books of Chinese travelers Hian Tsang, Itzing, Fahin, we know the social, religious conditions of Gupta period. Hyun Tsang visited India during Harshavardhana's period and praised about Harsha and his contemporaries in his book Siyuki. Unwritten Sources Archaeological Sources The sources which contribute to the ancient history of mankind is archaeological sources. There are three kinds, monuments, inscriptions and coins. Archaeologists excavated the sites of Harappa, Mohenjidaro, Takshasila, Nalanda, Saranth, Pataliputra, Hastinapura and Nagarjuna Konda. Sanchi, Sarnad, Amravati, Halebedu, Beluru, Mahabalipuram, Orugallu, Konat, Somnathpur monuments are the best examples of archaeological sources. Inscriptions Inscriptions are available on hill caves, stones, stone pillars, stone plates and copper plates. The earliest inscription in India are those of Emperor Ashoka. Coins The Indian coin punching system was refined during Indo-Bactrian rule. All Indian dynasties circulated special puncher coins. From the coins, we came to know about the economic and trade situations. Sculpture development, personality of several rulers and their interests in religion and arts. The discovery of a large number of Roman coins in South India confirms the fact that there was brisk trade between India and Roman Empire. That also refers to the economic prosperity of India and seagoing activities of its people. Indian History Culture Unity in diversity is the unique feature in India. The freedom and liberty are the feelings of the people. Large geographical area with varied landforms, diversity in lifestyle of people along with different customs and traditions of people that keep diversity but the cultural unity with coexistence leads to unity among the Indians. This makes India a land of unique features in the world. India has geographical diversities that make this country as a glimpse of world culture. India has diversified physiographic conditions with a variety of landforms like great Himalayan mountains in north, Indo-Gangetic plains in the middle, a hot desert in the west, number of plateaus in the south peninsula and the coastal plains along the peninsula. From the ancient period, many clans entered India. They settled in India and completely identified themselves with the Indians. Thus India is called as glimpse of different clans. In India, majority of people is Hindus with 82%, Muslims constitute about 12%, Christians 2%, Sikha 1.9% and Buddhists 1.5%.
and Jains less than 1% each. As per the estimates of the government, there are 6,748 castes in India. Cultural integration of India is formed by the mixture of cultures of different tribes and clans. Mainly, Indian culture is a union of Aryan and Dravidian culture. 